Hello, this is Fieldon Allison speaking. I'm here with my wife, Janet. We've served as missionaries in Africa, mostly East Africa, since 1972. During many of those years, we have done much teaching on marriage and family. We're discussing questions that many people ask us when we're teaching. What is our question for this session, Janet? The question that we want to look at for a few minutes is a question we often ask in our seminars. How does a wife show respect to her husband? That is a very important question. The Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 5, verses 22 through 24, that the wife is to be in subjection to her husband. Verse 23 says that the husband is the head of the wife. So it's obvious that God expects a wife to be respectful to her husband. If we look in the book of Genesis, after the fall into sin, God tells Eve in chapter 3, verse 16, that her desire will be to her husband and that he will rule over her. If the wife is under the authority of the husband, she should show honor and respect to him at all times. This is obviously an underlying principle in the relationship between a husband and his wife. However, this question of showing respect has a very cultural element to it. In Uganda and some other countries, a woman may be expected to approach a man on her knees. However, they also understand that other cultures don't have this practice. That reminds me of a verse in the Bible that tells how Sarah honored her husband Abraham. In 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 6, we read that Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. That was a way in that particular culture that women showed respect to their husbands. However, there aren't many cultures in Africa, I think, that continue that practice these days. So what you mean by having a cultural element is that a wife needs to find a culturally appropriate way of showing respect to her husband. Exactly. You know, I doubt that you would even find many Jewish families who observe this custom today of calling the husband Lord. Abraham and Sarah were the ancestors of the Jews. Even one particular culture will change its way of showing respect from one generation to another. Cultures do have a tendency to change over time. As the new generation grows up, they may learn new things and desire to do things differently from the way their parents did. It's important that the older generation give the young generation the freedom to develop their own style and refrain from judging them too harshly. The point that I see in the scripture about Sarah and Abraham, where we see Sarah calling her husband Lord, is that a wife must address her husband in a respectful manner. In the first place where we lived in Kenya, I noticed that the wives never called their husbands by their names. They always referred to them as the father of so-and-so, then named their oldest children, or sometimes even just as the father of the children. When I asked them why they do this instead of calling their names, they replied, oh no, we can never call our husbands by their names. That would be very disrespectful, especially in the presence of other people. I then asked them, what about when the two of you are alone together? And they told me, we can call them by their names these days when we're by ourselves. We can see then that not only is this matter of showing respect changing through the years with each new generation, it is also governed by whether or not they are in the presence of other people. I have had Ugandan men tell me that they don't expect their wives to kneel in front of them, even when serving them food, when they are alone or just with their children. It is mostly something that they do in front of their relatives because it's expected. It is very important that a woman honor her husband in front of other people. Not to do so would be a shameful thing for her and for her husband. However, she also needs to understand that her husband needs to feel respected even in the privacy of their home. It is an important need of a man to feel that his wife genuinely respects him and that it's not just a show that she puts on for the benefit of the relatives. We referred to the scripture earlier in Ephesians chapter 5, verses 22 through 24. In this passage, Paul teaches that wives are to be submissive to their husbands. This is one way that a woman shows respect. She defers to him as the head of the home. 
The husband is the one who has the authority to make final decisions for the family. The wife is to honor that position and be willing to follow his lead. Something that I find interesting is that in recent years, studies have been done among happily married couples to see what the most important need of both the husband and the wife is. What the researchers learned was that the primary need of the husband is to be respected by his wife. And here in this passage, we see that Paul, a man who never married, pinpointed this very need centuries ago. Even though he wasn't married, Paul was inspired by God in his teaching. It's amazing to me that very intelligent, scholarly men think that they discover something new. But when we look closely at Scripture, we find that the Bible has taught that very thing, or that very principle, throughout the ages. God the Creator knows exactly what both a man and a woman need to fulfill them. Respect is basically a very personal thing. It has more of a personal element, I think, than even a cultural element. One man may feel respected when his wife does a certain thing, but another man may not feel respected at all by that behavior, and it may even be annoying to him. Even within one culture, the desires or feelings of different men might vary on this issue. However, there are some general principles that hold true across all cultures. One very important principle is that for a woman to show respect for her husband, she must speak to him in a respectful tone of voice. Yes, Janet, that is so important to a man. If a woman speaks in a sarcastic, rude voice, or if she ridicules him, especially in front of other people, he's going to feel disrespected. If she raises her voice in anger, he will feel that she isn't respecting him. Even if she is keeping silent, he may feel she is disrespectful. When he asks her a question and she refuses to answer, or when she indicates by a look on her face or the way she acts that she is not pleased with him, he may feel that she is being disrespectful. Men have a deep-seated need to feel that their wives look up to them, that they admire them, that they trust them to take care of their families. Yeah. Therefore, when a woman complains and criticizes her husband often, he does feel disrespected. There are always going to be times when a woman may need to draw her husband's attention to a problem that she's noticed. However, she should do this in a gentle tone, a respectful manner. A man knows that he is going to make a mistake now and then. No one is perfect. And a husband and wife need to discuss things that irritate them. I want to know when I'm not pleasing you, Janet, but there is a way you can do that that can be very disrespectful. Actually, respect has more to do with a person's attitude than one's specific actions or words. If I truly have a respectful attitude towards you, it will be obvious in the way I behave in your presence and in the way I speak to you. Or we could say one needs to have a respectful frame of mind. If I have a respectful frame of mind, my behavior will show it. You know, some girls grow up in an environment where respect is modeled for them daily yeah. by their mothers and their aunts. So it is very easy for them to have a respectful attitude. It comes naturally for them. But some girls grow up in a home where the mother or an aunt do not show respect for her husband. Then I think it may be very difficult for those girls to cultivate respect. Yes, that's very true. When respect has not been modeled in the home, a woman will have to make an extra effort to cultivate it. She needs to remember that her husband is a trustworthy man, strong and dependable. She should focus on the aspects of her husband that are positive. When she begins to doubt these things or to focus on his weaknesses, then she loses respect for her husband. Of course, any man has some faults, but a woman needs to focus on his strengths and to express a appreciation for those things she likes about him. That is a very important word, Janet, appreciation. I'm a man who needs to have words of affirmation and encouragement often. When you criticize me, even for something small, I get discouraged and may get moody. And I may stay in a bad mood for a long time, which isn't good for either one of us. However, when you say things or show me in other ways that you appreciate me, then I feel uplifted, 
and respected. In fact, when you praise me for some quality that you see in me that you like, then I make even more of an effort to be like that or to do the things that make you happy. That's absolutely right. Even as a school teacher, I've seen that when a teacher or a parent continually ridicules or criticizes a child, he is not likely to improve his performance. He learns to believe that he is stupid because he has been told that so many times by a parent or a teacher. However, no matter how poorly a child is performing, if the teacher or the parent finds something to praise him for, he will strive hard to do better in order to please that teacher or that parent and get more praise. I've seen this over and over again in school, even with very slow learners or handicapped children. Well, what's true for children is also true for adults. Everyone likes to be praised. It feels good. And it makes us feel better about ourselves. Whether in the home or in school, in a church or in a community, we need to learn to show more appreciation for one another. You are so right. I need to tell you more often when you do something that I like, when you make me proud, when you make me happy. This not only shows you respect, but it will also ensure that you will continue to do those things that make me proud and happy. Then we're both winners. Yeah. I would be a winner because my wife is giving me the respect that I so much desire and need, and you would be a winner because I would be doing the things that you like more often. It's a kind of a vicious circle or a positive feedback cycle. As you show appreciation, I do more of the things you like. Then you express more appreciation, mm -hmm. and I do more of what you like, etc., etc. However, what happens when I disappoint you? What can you do when I don't do the things that you expect me to do as your husband? Can a wife still show respect when her husband refuses or is unable to do what is expected? That's a very good question. To answer it, I want to tell a story. My friend, Christine, that's not her real name, went through a very difficult time. Her husband suffered a stroke and was bedridden for two years. He couldn't work. He couldn't even walk. He wasn't able even to feed himself. Christine had to do all of her normal work, plus the work that her husband used to do for her, and then she'd have to feed and bathe her husband like a little baby. Since he could no longer go to work to make money, she had to find a way to earn a living to get some money to buy the things that they needed. She began doing a business, buying and selling onions and raising some vegetables to sell. Wow, that must have been a very difficult time for Christine mm -hmm. to manage everything on her own and to have to take care of her husband on top of everything else. Well, how did she cope with all that? Christine was a Christian, so she drew on the strength of the Lord and even maintained a cheerful, joyful spirit. She always spoke to and about her husband in a respectful manner. She encouraged her children to visit him, to spend some time with him every day, and to encourage him. Any time there was a decision to be made, she talked to her husband first to get his opinion. He couldn't talk to her, but he would indicate when he agreed with something by nodding his head. Or if he disagreed, he would just frown. She continued to make him feel that he was the head of the home. After two years, he made a complete recovery. You know, I'm sure that her positive attitude and her respectful mm -hmm. behavior helped him to have a hopeful attitude, and may have even helped him recover and regain his strength. For sure, it helped him to come to really appreciate her so that after his recovery, he loved her more than ever before. I'm sure you're right, Fielden. Contrast Christine's attitude and behavior with many women's behavior who have husbands who don't measure up. Some women may be afraid to address their husbands in a disrespectful manner, However, they may talk to their children about him in a disrespectful way, saying things like, your father just drinks away all of his money, so he doesn't do anything to help you. It is I who does everything for you. Your father is nothing, completely worthless. I'm sure there are many children who have heard similar words from their mothers. This is very harmful, not only to the marriage relationship, but also to the children as they are learning how to manage relationships for themselves. 
This selfish, self-promoting, self-glorifying attitude will completely destroy a marriage. You're so right. A husband needs his wife to encourage him to build him up, help him learn to believe in himself. That kind of encouragement, that kind of respect, will help a man to reach his full potential. You've probably heard the familiar saying, behind every great man is a woman. Sometimes this woman may be his mother or a teacher, but often this woman is a wife who has stood behind him and encouraged him. This greatness is not achieved by a woman criticizing him, ridiculing him, tearing him down, reminding him of his faults, but it's done by a woman who believes in him, who encourages him, and helps him reach his full potential. Someone may be thinking, but what if I'm married to a man who is an alcoholic or a drug addict or to an abusive man? How can I show respect to him when I don't feel any respect? Mm -hmm. By the way, respect is not the same as fear. One may fear a man but have no respect or admiration for him. These kinds of men do not inspire respect, though they may definitely inspire fear. That's a very good question. When a husband is actually doing things that are harmful for the family, how can a wife genuinely have respect for him? A woman has a great capacity for love and to believe in a person. Even if her husband is an alcoholic or abusive, she should try to find some aspect of his character that she can truly admire and appreciate. Perhaps he loves his children and spends time with them. Perhaps he is a generous person. Perhaps he is a good farmer or a good teacher or a good singer. The wife should encourage him in these areas, really show appreciation for these characteristics, and see if it makes a difference in his behavior. You know, I think that's a very good strategy, and I would encourage a wife to try that first. If she hasn't done the things we've talked about and shown him respect in every way that she can, then she should not take a further step. However, to a woman who has tried to show respect in every way she can, truly humbled herself, but she finds he is still destroying the family through alcohol, drugs, abusive behavior, even sexual addictions, then there is a way she can remedy the situation. She'll need to be very strong, but she may need to inform him that she is leaving him and taking the children with her in order to protect them and herself from his abusive behavior. Yes, Fielden, that is a step that sometimes has to be taken for the safety of the family. However, even then, she knows in her heart that she has tried her best to love and respect him. And when she reaches the point of having to separate, even then, she must do it in a respectful manner. She doesn't yell at him and abuse him. Instead, she politely tells him, I'm going to leave with the children now in order to save our family because your behavior is harmful to all of us, even to yourself. When you get the help you need to overcome your problem, we'll come back. Yes, sometimes, though rarely, that is a step that needs to be taken. There are government social services that can help a woman in that situation. However, most marriages, I think, are struggling with being respectful to one another day in and day out. That's true. But as we near the end of our discussion, I want to point out that showing respect for a husband doesn't mean that the wife is to keep silent. Although there are times when a wife needs to learn to keep quiet, at least for the moment, she should also feel free to give her opinions and express her feelings. Absolutely. The wife is a valuable member of the marriage and has many good things to contribute in the relationship. She should not only be allowed, but she should be encouraged to speak her mind. But she must always do this in a respectful manner. The husband will value her thoughts and want to hear more from her if she learns to speak in a respectful manner to him at all times. You're so right. I think what both the wife and the husband need to understand is that they are not competitors. They are on the same side. That's right. Yeah. When they work together in mutual respect solving any problems together as teammates, they will have a successful marriage. Definitely. That will go a long way to helping them succeed. We've come to the end of our discussion. 
If something we've said or left out brings a question to your mind, you can send us any question you have to aimfradio at gmail.com and we'll try to answer them by replying to your email message. We welcome questions or additional thoughts. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you.